Konnichiwa. I am Gladys Odar, a graduate student from the Philippines. I am thrilled to be interviewing Professor Konstantin Kocharavi. Uh, so I'll turn you over to Professor Kocharavi to talk about his uh, himself and a bit about his work at the Graduate School of Public Policy. Uh, thank you, Gladys. Um, yes, my name is Konstantin Kocharavi. I am an economist. I got my PhD in economics from the Pennsylvania State University in 2015. Um, I, that year I joined uh, the University of Tokyo. At first it was the Graduate School of Economics and in 2018 I joined GRASP, so it's been four years. Um, I do research in international trade and uh, at GRASP I teach international trade data science and sometimes I teach international finance. Uh, thank you. So, Professor, let's start this uh, interesting interview. So, I'm just curious because I saw from your CV that you're a graduate of software engineering. So, can you tell us about how you discovered economics as your field of research? Uh, yeah. So, indeed, uh, I did my undergrad undergrads at sof in software engineering and I think I was a as a third year student when I realized that I want to study economics. Um, one reason, one big reason for this was um, there were so many, I witnessed so many events, events in my life um, that uh, I wanted to learn more about. Uh, I witnessed the collapse of the Soviet Union and I wanted to understand I, I think part of the collapse was related to economics, so I wanted to understand that. Then, um, uh, I, as I was growing up in the 90s in Kazakhstan, which is my home country, um, I saw the um, economy going through waves of uh, disasters and booms, and I uh, wanted to understand how that was happening, why that was happening. Uh, so, just the one, and then when I was doing my undergrads, I saw a collapse of a big software company. It was the collapse of the dot com bubble, the burst of the dot com bubble in the United States. And then, after a few years, there was a collapse of a big software company in the city where I lived and studied, Novosibirsk. And I wanted to understand why such yeah. things happen. So, that was one thing. And another thing was, um, I was just I, I loved programming, but I wanted to apply it to something rather than programming in itself. So I wanted to uh, apply the things that I was learning to uh, something interesting. And uh, I felt like economics was one of the things. Yeah, I would assume during that time, um, like how economics is explains uh, what was happening around you is very intriguing for like uh, like an undergraduate student. So um, I think like the research and topics in economics are very practical and can actually like influence um, policy directions of institutions. So I, I myself find that um, engaging as a government employee from a developing nation. So uh, Professor, do you have like what what kind of research have you been conducting recently and how do you think it contributes to society? I think first I should say that my problem is perhaps that I have too many research interests, but as I mature <laughs> as an economist, I uh, have to narrow myself because my time is limited. Yes. So um, my pretty much 90% of focus of my research in the last several years was um, um, developing theoretical models of international trade. And um, in my work, I'm trying to introduce more realistic features to models of international trade and uh, understand the behavior of such models so that um, policymakers and more practical economists can apply such models with more realistic features to for the policy analysis. So, if you there is sometimes this comparison that in economics or in science there is this is an elevator and 
Uh, at the bottom of the elevator, there is this fundamental science developing of models, and on the top floor, it's a more applied work. So I'm somewhere closer to the bottom of this elevator. Okay, yeah. Thank you for that, Professor. Um, I know for sure like that your work will be helpful to like researchers, researchers from the academe, and also for like um, policymakers to craft effective policy uh, evaluation techniques and um, better policy implementation. So, yeah. Thank you. And then let's move on to like your work at GRASP. So, uh, for you, how will you define public policy, Professor? Uh, this is a hard question for me because I'm an economist. Uh, I can just, well, we can go and look it up at uh, Wikipedia, <laughs> yeah. but let me tell you my understanding. Um, uh, so, public policy for me is a set of actions, strategies, legislations that uh, governments or companies implement pursue in order to change something in the society where the society can be a village, a community, a city, a region or the whole country. So that's how I would define public policy. Uh, uh, somehow we kind of have this like, I think the similar understanding about like public policy. So Sensei, how can studying economics contribute to the field of public policy? Um, that's a good question. I think what economics teaches us is that there are unintended consequences. And so studying economics teaches us to think about all kinds of consequences of policies that you're trying to implement and um, through studying economic models, standard economic models, and studying different uh, use cases, um, case studies, um, um, we can see all kinds of linkages, of standard linkages uncovered by economists. And hopefully that knowledge can help um, policymakers to make better guided policy decisions. Yeah, yeah, actually that's true. Um, for me, uh, I think my economics background kind of helped me uh, to and guide me to have like a deeper understanding about like public policy concepts. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, in your four years, it's four years, right? Mm -hmm. Four years of teaching at GRASS. Um, can you share with us any rewarding moments you've had while teaching? Uh, thinking of it, um, I, it's hard to come up with a single rewarding moment or like epiphany moment. <laughs> uh, but I would say rather that this experience was consisted of many little things that made the whole process uh, very satisfying. So, like, you know, sometimes uh, my lecture would be good and then uh, students would comment that, yeah. oh, thank you, professor, for today's lecture. It was uh, great. And th this would be very rewarding to hear this. Um, uh, sometimes um, some students would um, challenge you with a question. And uh, sometimes that question would be so difficult and so unexpected yeah. that it would make me think about uh, um, how I do my research or what kind of research questions I ask or, or it would make me think that maybe there's something that needs to be researched more and that would be also rewarding in itself this interaction hearing some um, questions from people who are say practitioners who my grasp some of the grasp students are practitioners and they ask very practical questions or it can also be this whole experience of um, teaching my classes and then trying to improve them and this interaction with students, hearing feedback from yes. students and then improving the classes from year to year and then 
after each year, I look back at that year, at my classes that I talk, uh, taught that particular year, and uh, I, if I see the improvement in my own eyes, that yeah. feels satisfying. Yeah, definitely. I think like we in grasp, we have a lot, like we have like diverse set of students and as well as like different professors with very expertise that uh, also help uh, both students and professor learn from each other. So uh, I think, thank you for that, professor. Um, my next question is a bit related to like my earlier question. So how do you think studying um, economics contribute to or per help students pursue a public policy related career? So yeah, um, as I said before, uh, studying economics helps us to see linkages that um, yes. connections that exist in economies and markets. Um, um, also, it helps us to foresee um, unintended consequences of our actions and policies. Um, but also, you know, uh, one of the Nobel laureates uh, said, um, when he was asked to define economics, he said, uh, economics is uh, organized common sense. And so in that sense, studying economics helps to organize your mind and be uh, better at uh, dissecting problems. And also, studying economics helps you to become a critical thinker um, and be able to um, critically um, assess the information that you hear from other people or critically assess the data that you look at. Um, so definitely, I think this is one of, overall, being a researcher means being a criti critical a thinker and studying economics, even if you don't intend to be a researcher, still you can learn from your professors uh, to be a critical thinker. Yes, definitely, Professor. Um, I think like kind of economics give uh, the common sense, it, it helps it make sense in a way, because sometimes we think like, yeah, it's just common sense, but we need economics to, like evidence to support our common sense, right? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So actually, Professor, when I started applying for GRASP, I was like kind of worried about like my economics, mathematics and statistics background. So I'm worried if I'll do a lot of like quantitative analysis. So on this note, Professor, what do you think like students uh, uh, can expect to learn at GRASP? Um, yeah, so say uh, you were worried about uh, your, if the mathematical background yeah. would be enough, right? So first, definitely you can expect to have uh, some introductory yeah. courses that perhaps that are intended to be not so hard yes. and that can introduce you to the basics of economics. We have uh, classes that can, uh, where you can brush up your mathematical knowledge of mathematics necessarily to study economics. But um, all in all, and I'm talking about economics because I'm an economist, yes. so I know <laughs> the economics side well. Uh, all in all, we have a wide range of economics classes. We collaborate with the Credit School of Economics. Um, and this range of classes covers all kinds of areas of economics, starting from the very basics uh, and uh, up to the very advanced levels. And we have the microeconomics, macroeconomics, uh, statistics as the standard courses, but also we have more specialized topics like labor economics, um, mm, auction theory, or international trade, international finance that I teach. Yeah. I actually like learned uh, like refresh my memory of e like economic concepts uh, with a uh, uh, like basic economic courses like we have at GRASP and uh, learned a lot from like a lot of practical courses here. So before we close this like uh, meaningful conversation, Professor, do you have any uh, message or word of advice to uh, uh, applicants considering GRASP? 
if you join Grasp, we will do our best to help you to pursue your career goals. We will strive to provide, or we strive to provide um, uh, the stimulating environment, both and friendly, stimulating and friendly environment, so that you can um, focus on your studies and make connections um, and learn things that hopefully will help you to pursue the career. Not maybe not only limited to public policy, but also it can be consulting, finance, yeah. and uh, many other things. Yeah, I can definitely say that that's very true because um, my experience here at GRASP is very um, interesting, like exciting. Um, so again, thank you, Professor, uh, for, your, for sharing your time and your work with us. Thank you, Glass. Thank you, Professor.